Hello and welcome to the Proyaki Report, Volume 1, Episode 30, Tokyo Sabre, July 2013, Meeting. I'm Michael Westbay, your host. Yesterday, July 20th, 2013, I attended the third quarterly Tokyo Sabre meeting of 2013 at the restaurant Shiba no Tori Daiichi near Mita Station. The meeting started off on time at 3.30 p.m. with Yasuo Kunugi-san presenting a wealth of information about professional Japanese baseball managers. He has done many studies over the years for amateur baseball from elementary school level to high school and college level managers, but this was his first foray into looking at managers at the professional level. Originally published in the summer of 2010 edition of Baseballogy, a book dedicated to the study of baseball culture and society, the study looks at the success of managers in pro yaku broken down by pennant races, victories in the Japan series, where managers were born, educational level and schools attended by managers, positions played when active, and many, many more criteria. In this study, Kunugi-san declares the big three managers of all time as Sadayoshi Fujimoto, Osamu Mihara, and Kazuya Nomura. However, he later upstates this study in the journal Japan Baseball Culture Research that was published this past March 2013, in which he tweaked his evaluation criteria for the best manager. The new criteria allotted 10 points to a manager winning a Nippon series, 3 points for finishing the regular season in first place, and 1 point for a second place pennant race finish. No, additional points were not awarded for the Climax Series victors. Under this new criteria, Tetsuhara Kawakami comes out on top with 144 points, having won 11 Nippon Series, finishing first 11 times in the Central League with the Giants, and concluding a season in second place just once. Masaki Mori ranks second with 84 points, just a little more than half of what Kawakami caught. Much of that is from leading the Cebu Lions in their golden age, from the last half of the 1980s to the first half of the 1990s when the Lions won six Nippon Series and finished in first place eight out of the nine seasons he managed Cebu. Rounding out the big three in this second study is Shigeru Mizuhara, over 21 years as manager of the Giants, Toei Flyers, and Chunichi Dragons. Mizuhara won five Nippon Series finished in first place nine times, and was the runner-up five times for a total of 82 points. Of the original big three, Osamu Mihara drops from number two to number four, with 60 points. Kazuya Nomura drops from number three to number seven with 49 points. And because Satoyoshi Fujimoto spent the bulk of his career managing during the single league era, He drops from number 1 to number 32, with two first-place finishes after 1950 and one second-place finish for a total of eight points. For another take on the best managers, I'd recommend Gary Garland's managerial statistics ranked by wins in the JapanBaseballDaily.com data warehouse. It's all the same names, but in a different order. In all, Kunugi-san covered a lot of charts, mostly histograms, in a short amount of time while giving great insight into the data. It was a very interesting presentation. After a short break, Ikei-san presented a short talk on the history of Japanese-Taiwan baseball relations. And It started with the Japanese introducing baseball to the island as part of Japan's empire building in the early 1900s. I've read several studies about the development of baseball in Taiwan before, 
And this basically reiterates that much of Taiwan's baseball has its origins in Imperial Japan. Before Taiwan's first Little League World Series championship in 1973, the biggest baseball highlight for the island country was its showing in the 1931 high school baseball championships at Koshien. Yes, Taiwan was considered part of Japan during the war. There were Japanese families living there, and Japanese schools were established. A Japanese teacher, Hyotaro Kondo, manager of the Kagi Nonin High School baseball team, sought out the best players in Taiwan, Japanese or native Taiwanese. He brought five teams to Koshien in all, four summer championship series, and one spring invitational. With the 1931 squad making it all the way to the finals, the 1931 team was made up of a starting lineup of three Japanese youths and six native Taiwanese, including Shosei Go, also known as Ha Go, or also known as Masayuki Ishii, who pitched for the team and went on to play for the Giants, Tigers, and Mainichi Orions. Go furthermore went on to be inducted into the Japan Baseball Hall of Fame in 1995 posthumously. Kondo Kantoku was well known for treating all of his players equally, regardless of their original nationality. There have been several Taiwanese stars in more recent years in Japan, including Genji Kaku with Chunichi, the Orient Express Taigen Kaku with Cebu, and several others. But Taiwan hasn't only been a primary source for their native players. There have also been a number of players proving themselves in Taiwan before moving to Japan, such as Balvino Galvez and Alex Cabrera, and more. Several Japanese have extended their careers by heading to Taiwan, like everyone's favorite holding-on player, Shingo Takatsu. Several players also have gone to Taiwan to coach after retirement as well. Then there have been the Asia Series, Olympics, World Baseball Classics, and other international face-offs with Taiwan. Taiwan and Japan basically have a very long baseball history together, and that continues. Ikei-san wrapped up by mentioning that there is a movie in the works named Kano, which revolves around the 1931 Kaigi Norin High School's Koshien Run. It's expected to be released at the end of this year or beginning of 2014. Finally, one of the members had a slideshow of her trip to City Field for the MLB All-Star Game, including all of the spectacle that led up to it. That was three really good presentations at this meeting. And now it's time for the Pocket Calendar! Tomorrow, July 22nd, will be the release of this week's Japan Baseball Weekly Podcast, which will feature Jim Allen sitting down with Lotte's new slugger, Craig Brazell. Jim and John then plan on discussing the first two of the three All-Star Games for this year, and break down the pennant races through the first half of the season. And with that, I submit to you this week's Pro Yaki Report. Thank you for joining me. Until next week, take care.